Now, the first method that we're going to be using is using the triangle forces method. Now, this is the force diagram we're given, and this is like a result of that. Now, you know that this is our resultant and this is our equilibrium. Now, this is the resultant line, which is this line. This is the 10 Newton line, which is this, and this is this. Now, angle on the straight line. If we are to get this angle, this angle, if we call it alpha, 120 plus alpha will give us 180. We'll get our alpha to what? 60 degree. So it means this angle is 60 degree. If we use the now, we can easily get our arrow. If we have a triangle, we know, uh, let's say we, we know two sides, we are looking for one side and no angle. We can use the cosine rule. And the cosine rule is when you have a triangle A, B, C. If this is your small A, this is your small B, and this is your small C. Your a square will give you b square plus c square minus 2bc cos a. b square will give you a square plus c square minus 2ac cos b. Y c square will give you a square plus b square minus 2ab cos c. So I'm going to be using the idea of this. Now we know this place. 10 square will give us r square plus 10 square minus 2 times r times 10 cos 60 now this is 10 square minus 10 square that is 0 we will bring this to the other side this is 2 times r times 10 cos 60 is equal to r square now this is 2 times 10 times cos 60 is 1 over 2 now, if you, you will notice that I didn't put this R here. If we remove one R from this, this will give us our resultant. Now, 2 we cancel 2, it means our R is 10 times 1, which is 10 Newton. So that will be the value for our resultant force using the triangle of forces method. Quite simple. Now you, are, you can find the resultant straight away. Your r square, still using your cosine rule, will give you 10 square plus 10 square. Now instead of using minus, you use plus because you are using the angle straight away. So this will be plus 2 times 10 times 10 times cos the angle here, 120. Now this will give you r square is equal to 2 times 10 square plus 2 times 10 square times plus 120 is minus 1 over 2 now this r square is equal to 2 times 10 square minus 10 square equal to 2 times 100 minus 100 which is r square is equal to 200 minus 100 that is 100 so r will give us square root of 100 which is 10 and that will be 10 newton This is a very, very important method because it will be very, very useful for you when you start resolving final resultants of three, four, two or more forces. It will be very, very useful. Now, the first thing in the rectangular component method is this. Once you have a vertical force, uh, only vertical components will exist. Why if you have an horizontal force, horizontal components will exist. But when you have diagonal force, you are going to have both horizontal and vertical components. Now you see what I mean by that. Now if we draw our potential coordinates, that is our y-axis and our x-axis. If this is your y-axis, this will be y plus, this will be y minus. 
this will be x plus and this will be x minus now 10 newton this particular 10 newton is an horizontal force it's only horizontal component that will exist for it that is its vertical component will be zero but we have to resolve for this diagonal force now how do we do that the diagonal force is a line you are going to draw a line from the end point to touch the y axis and also a line from that end point to touch the x axis what do i mean by that this is the end point you trace a line to the y axis you trace a line to the x axis and after tracing that line you look at the direction of arrow of that force it is pointing towards this direction both the horizontal and vertical components must also point towards that direction now you will understand what we are doing now now this is the horizontal component of force 10 newton and this is the vertical component of force 10 newton now another important thing you have to know when resolving is that you always use angle of inclination to the horizontal what do i mean by that this 10 newton now the angle the angle of inclination to the horizontal will be from here to here is this angle on a straight line if this whole of this angle is 120 it means that this angle was 60 degree that is 180 minus 120 so paraventure that you are given a question and you have let's say you have something like maybe 30 here it's not this 30 degree you are going to use you are going to subtract it from 90 first because this 30 degree is angle of inclination to the vertical you subtract it you then get 60 that's what you are going to use as your angle now pending that um now let's resolve now for force 10 newton for force 10 newton let's call it our force f1 now our vertical component and our horizontal component now for vertical you use sine for horizontal you use cos now vertical our force is 10 vertical you use sine the angle 60 degree 10 sine 60 why it is that is that our vertical component is an opposite here if you're using application of the right angle triangle this is opposite why this is your hypotenuse and this is your adjacent now the, when you know your opposite and your hypotenuse that is sine 60 is equal to opposite vc over hypotenuse 10 so that's how if you cross multiply you get your vc to be 10 sine 60 that's why we're just writing the streets now going back to the question after you write this you now have to put your sign how do you do your sign? Your vertical component, the arrow is pointing way upward towards the positive y axis. So this will be positive. Now, since for horizontal component, then for horizontal we use what? Cos. Then cos 60. Now you look at the arrow, the arrow is pointing towards the negative x axis. So it means this will be what? Negative. Now our VC will give us this is 10 times sine 60 that is root theory over 2 which will give us 5 root theory our horizontal component is minus 10 minus cos 61 over 2 which will give us minus 5 now we go to the second force for force which still has a magnitude of 10 newton but this is now our force f2 now our vertical component here will be what? 0 while our horizontal component will be what? 10 newton as simple as that now resultant we now have to find our summation vertical forces and summation horizontal components sorry summation vertical component and summation horizontal component now this is our first vertical component five root theory the second one is what zero which is still what five root theory now our horizontal component the first one is minus five plus the second one 10 which will give us 5 so our resultant our resultant will then give us summation sorry square root of summation 
vertical component square plus summation horizontal component square, which is square root of summation vertical component is 5 root 3, 5 root 3 raised power 2 plus summation horizontal component is 5, 5 raised power 2. It means our resultant will then give us square root of 5 raised power 2 is 25, root 3 raised power 2 is 3. 25 times 3 that will give you 75 plus 5 raised power 2 25. So it means our R is 75 plus 25, 100. Our R will then give us 10 Newton, which is our result. As it is a very, very simple method and one of the best methods to use. Now we are to find the moment of applied forces about RA. So it means that we are going to be making our reference back to RA. Now, this is for the first time, this was 6 million and for 9 million. Now, one thing you should know about moment is that moment is force times perpendicular distance. Now, for 6 kN, our, our moment will give us force times distance. Now, our force is what? 6 kN. Our distance, force is about RA. So you find the distance to RA, which is what? 2. Now, this is 6 kN. If you have to change it to Newton, that will be 6 times 10 raised to power 3 Newton times distance 2. Now, this is 6 times 10 raised to power 3, which is 6 times 2 times 10 raised to power 3. Now, 6 times 2 is what? 12 times 10 raised to power 3. This is Newton. And um, this is meter, Newton meter. But if you want to change it to Newton per millimeter, uh, be Newton millimeter, sorry, this will be 12 times 10 raised to power 3 times 1000 meter makes 1 meter, so this will be times 10 raised to power 3, which will give you 12 times 10 raised to power 6 Newton millimeter. Now, um, for 9 kilonewton. Still using the same approach, our moment is equal to force times distance. Now our moment will give us, our force here is what's 9 
times our distance. Now, distance of 9 to R A L S 2 plus 3, which is 5. So this will give us, okay, let's convert the force also to Newton times 10 raised power 3. Now, 9 times 5, that is 45 times 10 raised power 3 Newton meter, which is 45 times 10 raised power 3 times 10 raised power 3 Newton millimeter, which is 45 times 10 raised power 6 Newton millimeter. So that would be the moment it felt. Uh, the moment of applied force is about RA for the first force and for the second force. Okay, now from this diagram, we want to calculate our reactions at A and our reactions at B. Now, this was the diagram that we were given. We will discover that I've already put it here. If we have to take moment about RA, uh, we have to take moment about RA. Now, if we have to take moment about RA, your RA will be an anticlockwise force, while your RB also will be an anticlockwise force. This is clonating and like clonating. We apply it in the clockwise direction. Now, our summation clockwise will always give us our summation what's at clockwise. Now, where's our clockwise? We are talking moment about RE. Moment of RE at this point will be RE times 0, which is to be 0. Now, for the second one, which is RB, so this will give us RB times distance from RE. Distance from RE is what? 7 meter. Now, that is for our moment clockwise. I'm doing that first. Now, for our summation clockwise, the first one we have here is 6 times distance to RA, which is 2 meter, plus the second one, 9, times distance to RA, which is 2 plus 3, that will give us 5. So it means that our RB times 7 will give us 6 times 2, 12, 9 times 5, 45, which is RB times 7 is equal to 57. So our RB will give us 57 divided by 7. It means that our RB will give us, so 57 divided by 7, that will give us 8.1429 kN, which is still the same thing as, if you multiply this by 1000, this is the same thing as 8142.9 newton. Now, the same approach for the second one. If we have to take moment about RB, taking moment about RB, this will give us RB times distance to RB, 7 is equal to uh, summation clockwise equals summation clockwise. Now, the first one we have here is 6 times distance to RB, 5 plus 9 times what? 2. Now, this RB times 7 is equal to 6 times 5, 30 plus 18. Now, RB times 7 will give us 48. It means our RB will give us 48 divided by 7. And our 48 divided by 7 will give us our RA to be 6.857143 kN, which is the same thing as 68571.43 Newton. This and this are still the same thing. So if you discover that if you apply, um, let's say you add 6. If you do your summation, upward forces equal summation, downward forces. Now, 6 plus 9, that will give us 15. Now, let's also add this together. Our 8 plus 6, that will give us 14. When you add this decimal, it will add an extra one, which will also give you 15. So, it will show that your total upward forces is equal to your total downward forces by this. Total upward forces. Is the same thing as your total downward forces. Now, your total upward forces is RB plus RB is equal to your total downward forces, 6 plus 9. So, meaning that if you use the first approach, that is, if you take moment at any point to get your first value, you can just input it here to get your second value. Now, the first thing that we're going to be doing here is that we are going to convert the loads of the UDL to point loads. Now, if we do it at the first thing, now calculating 
third loads. That is the uniform distributed loads. Now the first one is six kilonewton meter. Six kilonewton meter. It means that if we multiply it by distance, we are going to be able to change to cancel out the distance there. So this is the same thing as six kilonewton per meter. Then if we are multiplying by meter, this is six kilonewton times the distance to meter. Now six times two that will give us twelve kilonewton, which is twelve is part three. Newton. So it means the load is 12,000 Newton. So if we convert this to a centrally placed load, this will be 12,000 Newton or 12 kN. Now changing this to a centrally placed load, we divide this into 2. This is 2. When you divide it into 2, from here to here, we be 1 meter. Now I'm also going to do the same approach. For the four kilonewton meter, for the four kilonewton meter, which is the same thing as four kilonewton meter, four kilonewton divided by meter. Now, when we multiply it by the distance, which is also two meter, this will give us four times two, eight kilonewton. Our meter will cancel meter, so this is eight times kilonewton. There is part three newton, which is eight thousand newton. Now, it means if we are converting this to a central, to a point load, that will give us 8,000 newton, which is still our 8 kilonewton. Now the distance is 2, so here we we'll got 1 meter. So it remains 1 meter here, it also remains 1 meter here. Making 2 meters plus 1.8. So this will give us 3.8 meter. Now let's find the reactions. Taking, taking moment about RA. Now we take moment about RA. This will give us RB times RB times 5.8. We then give us 12 times 1 plus 8 times 4.8 using your calculator. That will give you 50.4. It means our RB is 50.4 divided by 5.8. Our RB will then give us 50.4 divided by 5.8. That will give us 8.6897 kN, which is approximately 8.7 kN. Now we're also going to take our moment about RB. Taking moment about RB. Now if I take a moment about RB, this will give us RA times distance to RB 5.8 is equal to now our first applied force there is 12 kN times distance to RB 4.8 plus the second one 8 kN times distance to RB 1. So RA times 5.8 sorry <laughs> don't mind my writing now this will give us 12 times 4.8 plus 8 times 1 which is 8. Now add 8 times 5.8 will give us 12 times 4.8 plus um, 12 times 4.8 plus 8. That will give us 65.6. 65.6. So our add A will then give us 65.6 over 5.8. Our uh, means our R is 65.6 so divided by 5.8 that will give you 11.31 kN. So it means our R A is 11.31 kN while our R B is 8.7 kN. Now 11.31 plus or let's say 11.3 plus 8.7 11 plus 8 that is 19 19 plus 1 that will give us 20 now you take a look at this 12 plus 8 is 20 it means our reactions are for it total upward forces is equal to our total downward forces
Okay, now in this question, we are going to be dealing with a free structure calculating of reactions at each point. Now, you can see I've already brought out each of those joints. For example, you have the first two joints being IG and being KL. Now, it's only being IG and being KL in which we know all the parameters. It's only our reactions that we need to find in that particular. Yeah, but coming to the EF, you can see that we are going to need RI and RP. And this is where we are going to get our reaction at I and our reaction at K. That is why you have to follow each of those systematically, follow it in the same order. Also in beam D bridge, you can see we need our reaction at D and our reaction at L. The same thing at beam A, B and our beam C, which is our last one. Now let's start from beam IG. Now from B IG, let's take moment about IG. Taking moment about IG. Now if you take moment about IG, this will be RI times 3 will give us 20 times 1. It means our RI times 3 is equal to 20. RI will then give us 20 divided by 3. Our RI will then give us 20 divided by 3, that will give us 6.67 kN. Now, our total upward forces, our total upward forces is RI plus IG is equal to our total downward forces, 20 kN. So it means that 6.67 plus IG will give us 20. Our IG will then give us 20 minus 6.67, which will then give us 13.33 kN. So it means our RI is 6.67, 6.67, and our RG, our RG is. Now we've gotten our RI and our RG to be this. Now we're going to add beam KL. Taking, taking moment about RL. Now, if I take a moment about RL, this will give us RK times 3 is equal to 20 times distance to RL, 1.6. Now, it means our RK times 3 is equal to 20 times 1.6, which will give us, uh, that will be 20 times, that will be 2 times 1.6, or better still, Our RK will then give us 20 times 1.6 divided by 3 and 20 times 1.6 divided by 3 that will give us 10.67 kN. Now applying your total upward forces, RK plus RL will give us our total upward downward forces 20. So it means that 10.67 plus RL is equal to 20. It means our RL will give us 20 minus 10.67, which is 9.33 kN. Now we have gotten our RK to be 10.67. 10.67. We have gotten our RL to be 9.33. 9.33. Okay, now let's go to at beam EF. Now, as beam EF, taking moments, let's take moments about RF. Taking moments about RF. Now, we are taking moments about RF. This will be RE times 5.4 is equal to the first two there, 6.67 times distance, 1.8 plus 1.8 is 3.6. Plus the second one, 10.67 multiplied by the distance 1.8. So RE times 5.4 will give us, let me see, 6.67 times 3.6 plus 10.67 times 1.8. Okay, so this will give us better steel. So this will give us 
RE is equal to 6.67 times 3.6 plus 10.67 times 1.8 divided by 5.4. And our RE will give us 6.67 times 3.6 plus 10.67 times 1.8 divided by 5.4 and that will give us 8.00 kN. Now your total upward forces IE plus RF is equal to your total downward forces 6.67 plus 10.67. Now this is 8 plus RF is equal to 6.67 plus 10.67. So our RF will give us 6.67 plus 10.67 minus 8 and that will give us 9.34 kN. So it means our RE, our RE is 8 kN, while our RF is 9.34 kN. Kilo now going to beam GH. Now taking moment, taking moment about RH. Taking moments about RH, this will give us RG times 5.4 is equal to 13.33 times distance 3.6 plus 9.33 multiplied by distance to RH 1.8. So it means our RG will give us 13.33 times 3.6 plus 9.33 times 1.8 divided by 5.4 so now 13.33 times 3.6 plus 9.33 times 1.8 everything divided by 5.4 and that will give us our RG to be 12.00 kN now if our RG is 12.00 kN our RG plus RH will give us 13.33 plus 9.33 so this is 12 plus RH we give us 13.33 plus 9.33 it means our RH will be 13.33 plus 9.33 minus 12 and that will give us our RH to be 10.66 kN. So our RH is 10.66 kN. Our RH 10.66 kN. Why our RG 12.00 kN? Okay, 12.00 kN. Now going to be in AB. Taking moments. Taking moment about let's take moment about RB. Taking moment about RB. Now this give us RA times five is equal to uh, this is eight. Our RB. Let me confirm. Our R is eight times distance to RB three plus one times four plus twelve times one. So our RB times R A times 5 will give us 8 times 4, which is uh sorry 32, 8 times 4, 32, plus 12. It means our R A times 5 is equal to that is uh, um 44. Our R A will then give us 44 divided by 5, and that will give us uh 44, 44 divided by 5 which is 8.8 .8 kN. So RA plus RB is equal to 8 plus 12. It means RA plus RB is equal to 20. But I've gotten our RA to be 8.8 .8 plus RB to be 20. So it means our RB will then give us 20 minus 8.8. .8. And 20 minus 8.8 that will give us that's very simple that will give us 11.2 kN. So it means our reaction at A, our reaction at A is 8.8 .8 kN. Our reaction at B is 
11.2 kN. Now let's go to the last beam here, which is beam CD. Now at beam CD, let's take our moment cables already. Taking moment about ID. Now we are taking our moment about ID. This will give us RC times 5 is equal to 9.34 times distance to so RD which is 4 plus RH which is 10.66 times distance to RD which is 1. So our RC times 5 will then give us 9.34 times 4 plus 10.66. So it means our RC is 9.34 times 4 plus 10.66 divided by 5. And this will give us our RC 9.34 times 4 plus 10.66 divided by 5. This will give us 9.6 kN. Now, since our RC is 9.6 kN, RC plus R D will give us 9.3. Now we're putting our RC to be 9.6 kN. Now your summation upward forces, your RC plus your RD will give us RF plus RH. And your RF is 9.34 plus your RH which is 10.66. Now it means RC plus RD which is 9.6 is equal to 9.34 plus 10.66 now our RC will then give us 9.34 plus 10.66 minus 9.6 now it means RC will give us 10.66 minus 9.6 that will give you um, plus 9.34 that will give you 10.4 kN so it means our RC is 9.6 kN and our RG is our RG is um so is our RC this is our RC this is our RG so is our RG that was 10.4 kN your reaction has been reaction has been reaction has C and reaction has been so you can see this is very very quite simple stuff. Once you follow the beam, beam by beam, you start from beam IG and your beam KL. You can see it's from the diagram. You follow it to the last. It's not that you start, you can't complete from beam AB to beam CD because on beam AB you have some beams that are lying on it. So that's why you have to start what from the origin. So this is how you solve questions like this on the frame structure. Now, in this question, we are looking for the reactions as E and also as our reactions as B. Now, now, taking moments about RB. Now, if we have to take moments about RB, summation clockwise, we have our RA times distance to RB, which is 6, plus 6 times distance to RB, which is 1.5. Now, our anticlockwise forces, that will be 6 times distance to RB, that is 2.5 plus 2 plus 3 which will give us 7.5 plus 18 this times to RB 2 plus 3 that is 18 times 5 plus 12 times 1.5 1.5 1.53 plus uh, 18 times 1.5 9 distance of 9 to 0 is still distance from 9 to RB is 0 so that will be 0 and that is all. Now this is 6RA plus 6 times 1.5, that is 9, I think. 6 times 1.5, yeah, 9. 
So this will give us 6 times 7.5 plus 18 times 5 plus 36 plus 18 times 1.5 which is 198. So 6i will give us 189. Yeah, 198 minus 9 divided by 6. It means our IA is 31.5 kN. So it means our IA is 31.5 kN. Now, take a moment about IA. We have to take a moment about IA. We want to find our IA. Take a moment about IA. So this will give us IB distance to IA, which is 6 plus that is 6 times 1.5 will then give us 18. 18 times distance to add a 2.5 minus 1.5 that is 1 plus the next one 12 times let me put this here this is 1 1 meter okay now 12 times 3 plus 18 18 times this is 3 4.5 18 times 4.5 plus 9 times 1.5, 3, 5, 6, 6 plus, yeah, plus 6 times 6 plus 1.5, 7.5. So it means our RB times 6 plus 9 will give us 18 times 1, which is 18, plus 36 plus 18 times 4.5 plus 9 times 6 plus 6 times 7.5 and that will give us 234 so our RB will then give us 234 minus 9 which is 225 divided by 6 it means our RB is 225 divided by 6 37.5 kN okay now let's confirm our total upward forces must be equal to our total downward forces now our total upward forces is rb plus rb must be equal to our total downward forces 6 plus 18 plus 12 plus 18 plus 9 plus 6 now our rb is that's 1.5 plus 37.5 is equal to 6 plus 18 plus 12 plus 18 plus 9 plus 6 which is 69 now 31.5 plus 37.5 which is 69 is equal to 69 it means that the reactions are correct so reaction at A is 31.5 kN while reaction at B is 37.5 kN Let's find the bending moment. We should know that the bending moment at C and G will be zero. Bending moment at C is zero and bending moment at G is zero. Now, bending moment at A. Reaction moment minus load moment. Before A, is there any reaction? No. So this will be zero minus load moment, six times distance to A, 1.5. So this will be zero minus six times three over two, and that will give us minus nine to the Newton. So it means we have the moment at A with minus 9 kN. Now going to D. Is there any reaction before D? Yes. 31.5 times distance to D, 1, minus load moment, 6 times distance to D, 2.5, which will give us, that's 1.5 minus 6 times 2.5, and that will give us 16.5 kN. Now going to E. Bend the moment at E. Reactions before E, that is that's 1.5 times distance to E, 3, 1.0 plus 2.0 minus load moment. We have first half 6 times 2.5 plus 2.0, that is 4.5 plus the next one we have is 18 times distance to E, 2.0. Now that's 1.5 times 3 minus 6 times 4.5 minus 18 times 2 that will give us this 1.5 kN now bending moment at F reactions before F that's 1.5 times distance to F 1 plus 2 that's 3 3 plus this 4.5 
minus load moment. Now I load the first one we have there is 6 times distance to F. 2.5 plus that is 4.5. 4.5 that is 5. 6 plus 18 times distance to F. 3.5 plus 12 times distance to F. 1.5 which will give us that's 1.5 times 4.5 minus 6 times 6 minus 18 times 3.5 minus 12 times 1.5 and that will give us 24.75 kN. Now, bending moment at B, bending moment at B, our reaction moment, that is that's 1.5 times distance, that is 6 minus, we have 6 times 7.5 plus 18 times this is 2 3 2 3 that is 5 plus 12 times that is 3 plus 18 times 1.5 it means our bending moment will give us this 1.5 times 6 minus 6 times 7.5 minus 18 times 5 minus 12 times 3 minus 18 times 1.5 and that will give us minus 9.0 kN so this will be our bending moment at C, bending moment at G, at A, at D, at E, at F and at B Now, I want to find the resultant of this system of forces. It's quite simple. So, now the first thing that I'm actually going to do here is that I'm going to resolve all the diagonal forces. What do I mean by that? I'm going to trace them to the Cartesian coordinates, that is, tracing them to the y axis and also tracing them to the x axis. Now, what do I mean by that? Now, like this force trace in your team, if you trace this to the x axis, you trace this to the y axis. Now the arrow is pointing towards the direction, the vertical component for this will also point here and for this will also point here. Now same thing for this also, you trace it here, this will point here and this will also what? point here. Same thing for this, this will point towards the direction and this will also point towards the direction. Now, this is the horizontal component for 20 Newton. Horizontal component for 20 Newton will be 20 horizontal cos the angle 20 cos 30. 20 cos 30. The arrow is pointing towards the direction, this goes negative. Now, the vertical component for this, this will be the arrow is pointing upwards, so this will be plus 20 sine the angle 30 plus 20 sine 30. Now for this, the arrow, this is 15, horizontal plus the angle, 45. Pointing towards the positive x axis, positive. Now for the vertical, which is sine, 15 sine 45. It's pointing towards the positive y axis, so it will also be positive. Now you can discover I'm using the angle of inclination to the horizontal. It is very, very essential. As when they gave you the angle here, you have to subtract it from 90 first before you use it. Now, also for this, this is um, the force is 10 cos 60. Now it's pointing towards the positive x axis, positive. Now, and for this, um, this will be 10 vertical sine the angle 60. And it's pointing towards the negative y axis, so this will be negative. So now our summation vertical component. Our summation vertical component. The first one that I have here is 20 sine 30 plus 20 sine 30. 20 sine 30. The other one that we have is plus 15 sine 75. Sine 45, sorry. Plus 15 sine 45. 
then we also have minus 10 sine 60 minus 10 sine 60 so solution vertical component will give us 20 times sine 30 1 over 2 plus 15 times root 2 over 2 minus minus 10 times sine 60 root 3 over 2 now solution vertical component will give us 10 plus 7.5 root 2 minus 5 root 3 it means our summation of vertical components will give us that is 10 plus 7.5 root 2 minus 5 root 3 which will give us 11.9463 now our summation of horizontal components our summation of horizontal components the first horizontal force that we have is 10 is pointing towards the negative x axis that is minus 10 the other one that we have is minus 20 cos 30 after this we also have this plus 15 cos 45 then we have plus plus 5 newton and the last one which is 10 cos 60 plus 10 cos 60 now it means our summation horizontal component will then give us minus 10 minus 20 times cos 30 cos 30 that will be root 3 over 2 is cos 60 that will be 1 over 2 plus 15 times cos 45 root 2 over 2 plus 5 plus 10 times cos 60 1 over 2 now summation horizontal component will then give us minus 10 minus 10 root 3 plus 7.5 root 2 plus 5 plus 5 now summation horizontal component will give us 5 plus 5 10 minus 10 that is 0 this is minus 10 root 3 plus 7.5 root 2 and this is summation horizontal component is minus 10 times root 3 1.732 plus 7.5 times root 2 1.414 so our summation horizontal component will then give us that will be minus 17.32 plus 7.5 times 1.414 which will give us minus 6.7139 which will give us minus 6.7139 so our resultant is given by summation sorry square of summation vertical component square plus summation horizontal component square now this is square root of our summation vertical component is 11.9463 raised to the power of 2 summation horizontal component minus 6.7139 raised to the power of 2 and that will give us square root of 11.9463 raised to the power of 2 plus minus 6.7139 raised to the power of 2 it means our resultant is 13.7037, which is approximately 13.7 kN. So, this is our value of our resultant, 13.7 kN. Now, if resolving everything in one diagram is confusing, you can actually decide to take it force by force. That is, you first take for force 10 newton, you resolve it for for strength in your team, you bring out this diagram, you resolve it.